ourselves something that is superior. We're, we're looking at ourselves as you know, really a, boot, a boutique, a boutique you know, clean rearing operation. It's going to be difficult for us to grow to be, to be huge because we really worry about that quality. How do we keep the quality and still be able to grow the number? That's the challenge. So if you really want to put the time into it, you'll see this. And you, you can go on, you can watch some of the people that are, develop, that are pushing out cleans right now. And if you listen to the way they're pumping them out, it really doesn't work out to the way the, the physiology with the, with the clean will work. That clean should be laying for a minimum of 21 days in the hive to have full ovary development. But if you listen to how some of these guys are going through them, plucking the queens out once they're laying, that doesn't give that queen enough time to really develop those ovaries to the full extent. Our queens are, are, are pulled, typically our nukes go out, that queen goes flies to and from that nuke, and you're getting that, that nuke with that queen in it, so she's never caged. If you're getting, if you're buying a mated queen, we don't sell a lot of them, but uh, she's laying for a month before, before we'll send it out. So when you're doing that, what happens is, you could potentially get a queen that looks good at the beginning of the season, is doing okay, Maybe it peters out in the summer, maybe it peters out in the fall or in the spring when it's too early for you to get a new queen. What is that? Is it poorly mated? Maybe the ovaries, again, weren't developed well? But there's such a push to dump all these commercial queens out there that the quality of the queens, I think, are a huge issue of what we see in beekeeping today. Uh, you know, regardless of whether you, you look at bees in the south or bees in the north, I can't speak to the bees in the south. I don't, I don't buy them. I don't, I don't never kept bees in the south. I'm only talking about the bees that we keep here. And all of our bees have been raised within 15 miles of Homer, New York, at an elevation of between 17 and 1800 feet with winds that are 50 plus miles an hour. I don't put anything around them, as we'll see earlier on how I winterize my bees, which is next to nothing. So again, talk about zone appropriate. You know, I use the, the example, if you're planting trees, you don't plant a zone 7 tree in upstate New York, it's just not going to work. We look at the same thing with the bees that we, that we raise. We want to do the same thing. Temperament, that's kind of up to the beekeeper themselves. Because we sell nukes and we want it to be a fun experience for everybody, uh, we try to you know, make sure that our bees are as docile as can be. You know, so you, if you want to, you only have a few hives, we can work them slowly. You can take your gear off and work them without, without gloves, without, you know, without any equipment. And that's, that's what we do push for. Prolific, I think, is important when you're in an environment like ours. If your bees are to swarm, uh, if you're to crush your queen on accident, uh, you're going through the frames, and there's a, a real rookie newbie new beekeeper thing that happens all the time. You crush that queen, well, what happens? Can those bees bounce back quick enough to, in order to be a robust hive to get to your winter? That's what we want. There's some, some breeds that uh, ramp up real slowly. Uh, we've gotten queens in that we've brought in from all over the place. We've brought in uh, Buckfast from Canada. Uh, we've got Saskatraz. Uh, we've got some queens that came out of Vermont. Uh, but a lot of them didn't ramp up fast enough. They would be a fantastic hive at the end of the season or moving into late summer if you just wanted one hive for, and then you wanted some honey at the end of the season. They did well. But for us, we need that. I want them in May 1st or end of April. I want them exploding, busting at the seams. That's really what we're looking for. Something that ra is that rapid so they can really bounce back and also so that we can split and regenerate those bees. Honey production, obviously, I mean, we've never had an issue. You know, our, our line produces a, a ton of honey, but that again, that's up to you know, what, what your goals are. Are you a pollinator? Are you a honey producer? Are you a nuke, nuke producer? But most people that are buying bees from us want honey. So we, we still put a high emphasis on how much honey are you able to put out. Talked about this, this is where it all starts. You know, without having a very, very well-fed queen, uh, you're, you're, uh, you're not going to have a high success rate when you're overwintering. Uh, the, the number of queen failures that we hear about, you know, we're not seeing in our production, but again, so we're putting a lot of time and effort into making sure that queen at the base level is extremely strong. Uh, this is actually the only portion of my business that I keep to myself. It's my secret sauce and my, in my operation. I feel like I'm doing something a little bit different uh, to really put out better queens than what we see out in the market. So I am an open book on everything else we do, and I'll talk you about all the mistakes that I've made and what we've done and where we're going. And uh, I'll tell you what I would do if I had X hives, which we'll do in a little bit on, uh, on how we overwinter. Uh, but 
this is really the only piece that I really that I try to keep to myself and uh, it's kind of the self promotion piece there. So now we step into to winterizing hives and this is a little bit of a progression of where we were and where we are now. You can see the picture on the left was probably close to you know ten years ago. Uh, we used to try you know wrapping the hives, um, put little flaps on the front of them. Put insulation around them. Did a, did a lot of different things in order to to overwinter our hives, and uh, didn't really see a huge difference in the ones that we didn't get to and the ones that we got to. Uh, so I slowly moved away from that. The one on the left, you'll see, still running double deeps. Uh, you'll see there is a quilt box that's on top of that, which I'll go into detail in just one second. This is actually just a picture. I just snapped a couple of these real quick and threw these in here just because we got a bunch of snow this week. This is a couple of my bee yards uh, that I just took close-up pictures to of right here. Um, the hives that you're seeing that are taller than the other ones, those are those are doubles. I'm running four, fours next to each other on those. The ones that are down in the bottom, I've pushed everything down into 10 frame boxes now. I'm running all of my, my 10 frame here. I'm overwintering everything in 10 frame boxes. I'll, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to have a few starvation losses this year just due to doing that. It's the first year I've run everybody into 10 frame boxes and it's a timing issue. Just one 10 frame box? One 10 frame box. Push them down. Now I run, I run everything through the season. Now when you're talking about a, somebody that's running, uh, you know, several hundred hives, time management is of the utmost importance. So for me, I can't have two two deep boxes if I'm trying to. I can't tell you like in the past years how I would struggle. If you're trying to find a queen, you're going through it, trying to do splits, do you shake them all down? Do you find this? Do you wait till you find a queen? The third time you're going through through these boxes and you're throwing your arms up in the air going, what am I doing? You know, this is ridiculous. I'm trying to find this queen. I'm running mine in 10 frame, uh, 10 frame boxes for time management purposes. For somebody that's on the you know, have less hives, you've got the time to do it, you've only got a few, is it that important? You'll have to make that call on what, on what you think and what you're doing. From a standpoint of why do I want to run 10 frame boxes from a, does it make sense for the bees? Well, you've got less room to heat, you've got an easier time of, of controlling humidity in that 10 frame box. If you look at what a natural hive does, they're not going to have that giant, they're probably not going to have that giant cavity that they would normally have. So we push them down in there. The other side of it is they're always going to be in contact with food. If the bee is, you know, starts up to move from one side to the other, the cluster is always going to be in contact. If you've got a you know, robust hive, they can move within that. I'm sure some of you have seen hives that you've got 10 frame box below, emptied with honey, very cold temperatures, full box of honey above, they didn't make it to the top. For whatever reason, maybe they're feeding in the bottom corner. So this is requiring uh, a, a big amount of manipulation in the what month in the fall? Manipulation in terms of pushing them down to that? Into into one deep. Yeah, I'll I'll show that. I'll show you that in a in a minute. On what how we do that and how we push them down. Um, there's not a lot of manipulation. You're you're uh, we we uh, well. Give me one second, and, 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 I'll, and I'll get to that, and I'll show you how, okay. how, how, we, how we do that. But yeah, no, I want to reduce the amount of manipulation that I have. You know, my manipulation is going to come in the spring to take resources out of those hives because they are so prolific, so I'm making my splits out of those, I'm pulling those out. If I was to leave them in a 10 frame box with a queen scooter over them, you, you've probably seen videos on YouTube where if you do the math with the number of eggs a queen can lay, uh, you could run them in a 10 frame box and they should never run out of space. It doesn't work that way. They, they will run out of space if they're prolific bees. They'll, they'll end up swarming on you. So we pull a bunch of the resources out of, out of that. We will move them up into the top or we'll split or we'll split them off into new hives. But there is manipulation in the spring in order to set them up and make sure that they're weaker so that they're not going to swarm. And then we're running a queen scooter over that 10 frame box and then we run them up after that. I will split them again later in the season, maybe when I'm pulling June honey, uh, when it makes sense, but then I'll split off again, I'll take resources off again. Uh, there is manipulation uh, in, that, in that sense of taking strength a 
away. And so for somebody that's a backyard beekeeper, again, I'm telling you how I'm doing it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to make sense for you guys. If you're not worried about splitting, if you're only worried about making more honey, then running them in, a t in two tens, that's fine. If you don't have, you're not trying to split or go through it. If you don't have to search for your queen, I'm searching for my queen and making, the, making these manipulations because I'm taking resources away and I'm doing other things with them that you folks may not be doing. As, as you know, for, for this, this is fantastic. Talk about insulation. You hear a lot about, you know, keeping bees in boxes that are only, you know, three, three quarters of an inch. Well, this is the best insulation you can get right here. Like, you got them covered up in snow. Just, uh, for me, we got a bunch of snow a couple of days ago. And it was going to be in the single digits for a couple of days. And I just left them. I wasn't going to go and even brush off front, front entrances in order for them to, to get out. Just leave them buried in it. That way, you know, I know the worst they're going to get is 32 degrees in there. They got their little igloo. They're going to be just fine. But even when I do brush them off, all I'm doing is like the picture on the right there. That picture on the right, I'm just barely brushing off enough in the front so they can take flights. Uh, whether it was, I don't know if it was yesterday, I don't know. In the last couple of days. Uh, but I mean, it was 25 degrees, and I have bees flying all over. Usually don't lose people that early. <coughs> but um, but you know, it was 25 degrees, and they're, you know, they're, they're still flying all over the place. They're, they're moving, the bees are, 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 are taking cleansing flights. But that's all you want right there. Leave the rest of them covered right up. That, that's a, it's a great little igloo for them, and you know, it keeps that, that heat in. So, this is how we, we push we push them down. We use the skateboards uh, in there. Uh, the skateboards work fantastic for us. You know, this is the way we move everything. Now, with, with this one, it's an example. We might put some of the boxes up above that were either partially filled, they weren't capped, so we'll move them. Or we'll just maybe, if this is a, a middle of the season time frame, then we'll put room up above them just so they've got plenty of room to go. To, to go. So we're, we're taking those boxes. So the ones on top, would have been full of honey. Those boxes on the bottom, they may all be empty. You may just be giving the bees room in the bottom if it's a mid-season. But now if it's the end of the season, you ask about manipulation, we're going to put that escape down. We're going to push them right down to either all the way to a 10-frame box or we're going to push them down into two 10-frames and then go back in later and do it one more time and push that last one down. The skateboard, just, it, it's, it's just so quick and easy for us to be able to go in. And if you're, if you're in and out of the bee yard, bee yards really fast, you get very, very little robbing out of it. Uh, you're not shaking bees. As soon as you start shaking bees out of a box, particularly when there's a little bit of a dearth, you know, if, if you're getting, because we're doing this, these kind of numbers, you're getting like 50, yard, 50 bo uh, hives in a bee yard, they're gonna, you're going to have so many bees swarming. It is just, it's a nightmare to work. But by doing the escapes, there's no bees in there. If you're quick. Get things on the truck and you're out of there. We're typically out of a yard in a half an hour, 45 minutes. Or as soon as the bees start getting too active, we start getting robbing, we're gone. We'll come back and do the rest another time. It's just not worth the money right there. And if you guys have questions, like, yeah, I mean, just don't forget. Them. This is better. Be I've got my, my things that I want, I'm going to talk about, but it's more important that you guys have your questions and things get answered than what I'm talking about here today. What's different during those with the escape works? I like it. I just have to build more skateboards, which I hate doing. But yeah, I, I have two for every hive I have. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. Yeah, yeah. Have not done that, but I would like to. I appreciate I, that. I, I average in two two deeps after the winter. You you start adding deeps. What was that? You start adding deeps after the winter from the one ten frame. Yeah, yeah. So so I'll go in. I'll leave them. I'll leave them clustered up tight until I see the weather's going to really break and I see a, a hard pollen uh, coming in. I kind of push it. I really want to keep them condensed as long as possible. Uh, it just, we, you know, we have those times where it looks like it's going to be great. Uh, I've, I've made the mistake year after year after year of trying to start grafting in uh, the 20th of April or even, you know, just trying to time it just perfect so that when, when those drones are going to be out, we're going to do it, but it's not even worth it. So I'm kind of timing everything based on when the drones are going to come, when the food is going to be there. And when I see that, I, I really hold it until the last minute before I sort of catch it. So, so one deep would work if you, if you wanted to leave it that way, right? With, a, with a one deep 
and a, a super. Uh, for what? For a winner? No, for the for the summer. You, well, you're going to have to continue to add, but yeah, I'm, maybe I'm not following. Well, so, suppose you just leave one dude. And, you know, I've got a couple of singles and a couple of uh, du and singles something that can work well. Um, well, I guess it depends on how prolific the bees are. If your bees are going to be growing continually throughout the summer, which you'd hope that they would, I think a deep and a medium or a deep and a super, they're going to eventually swarm on you. So you're probably going to have to continue to, to, to add unless I'm missing that question. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no, I... I, I mean, and if, if I was to let one hive just go, if I went, if I started from my, I'm splitting everything. All of my hives, I'm pulling resources from because I'm trying to make sure that when I walk into a bee yard, it's difficult for me to look at all of them if they're all out of whack. So I'm trying to keep everybody about the same so that I'm doing everything at the same time. If I have to keep going back to the bee yard multiple times, I just don't have time to do that. So if I was to, to start one, like if I had a backyard, all I cared about was how much honey can I put on this thing. Then I mean, by the end of the season, or by, I mean, they're gonna, it's going to be a mountain of boxes. I wouldn't even, you know, you'd, I'd be standing on the back of my tailgate to put boxes on top of these things in order to keep growing those. So no, I, I wouldn't think that you would be able to just get away with that. I think you'd have multiple boxes on top of boxes. Uh, but we pull our honey to try to, based on color. We try to, if, I, if my, my bulk buyer wants everything, based on color preference and, and, uh, and flavor. So we typically pull in sometime in June when it's convenient, and then we pull again before Goldenrod comes out, and then we pull again in, uh, at, in, at the end of in September. Are you using queen excluders? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. A, a, a 10 frame box with a queen excluder over top of that. So the queen is stuck in that bottom box. And everything above that would. She won't, the summer. That, she won't swarm for that being too little space? She does not swarm in, well, so some of them do. Um, if, I, if, I lose, if I lose track of them, if I don't get boxes on them, if you run them in this and you're trying to do honey production with a 10 frame box, you put, I, I find that you, you have to put boxes on sooner than you normally would. If, if she's got the room to bounce through two boxes, I think you get a little more leeway. But, you know, where, you know, some people use this thing. If you've got uh, six frames filled, you know, ten frame box, and six of them are filled, you got two on the outside of, of each one, it's probably time to put one on. I'm going way before that. I'm, I err on the side of getting boxes on much sooner than you would otherwise. If you can find to a one bee box with ten frames, that's enough space for her to keep laying and not feel overcrowded? If you keep those boxes going up. But that's but just for the honey. Right. Enough. Right. Yeah. Yep. So she's pushing that force up. Now, for me, first off, every genetic bee is going to be different uh, on how on how on how quickly they, they reproduce. But for us, you have to also remember, I'm pulling resources out of that hive. So I'm pulling frames out in the spring. I'm doing my splits. I'm doing all that. So I'm in, I'm immediately weakening them. But that's also going to lessen the amount of honey that I'm going to get if I if I doing that because I'm not as worried about the honey in the early season. Got enough hives. Rick? So in the summer, you're still running one box, you're not running another deep on top of that. No. But you're weakening it periodically. But you're pulling from it. Yep, I, I am. Okay. Yep. That makes yeah, sense. It, it, that's the point that people are missing. You're running singles, but you're taking frames of brood yeah. and eggs out of them and putting empties back in. Yeah, I assume. To, to make splits. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That, that allows the queen to keep ahead. Uh, yeah. That's why she doesn't. I, I am, but I know I know that there's a lot of people that are doing this, and I'm sure I could too if I staying ahead of it uh, by running them just like this, but just continue to add boxes on top, and they do just fine with it. You'll see several people that you know that you I won't name names here right now, but uh, there's some, some big beekeepers that are running running it like this for honey production as well as running running it like we are right now. So when you have single brood box, do you tend to have In, in that, yeah, they will keep, yeah, they will push everything up. The, 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 they're, they're pushing your, your outer of your 10 frame box, you might have, you know, you'll have some pollen uh, in there, or they'll put pollen around the outside, where you, you won't see as many of those frames that are pollen from wall to wall. They'll push those, like, maybe directly above the brood, so they have resources to go up and down and grab that. 
Um, but you'll see a lot of talent around the outside of the brood as well. Do you use drone frames at all? No. Okay. Uh, not for that. Okay. But my, my, my bees are, are blasting so much, they're going crazy. You end up with on the bottom of the brood box, like when they start getting full, they're, they're, there's ton, you pull those frames up and then you're stuck to the bottom. There's, there's drone brood all over the bottom of those frames. There's no need. That's, uh, we'll get into that later with all the drone brood manipulation and all that stuff. Again, I'm trying to make this as simple as possible. Uh, that's getting outside of the scope of me just have, wasting a lot of time by, by putting those in. With me, I'll forget about it and leave them in there. I have drones everywhere. I, I, I go through a bee yard, so I go through hives, and then the next thing I know, I'm going through hives I already went through. Like I, I can't keep track. I can't keep track of things. So no, I try to make things as simple as possible. So um, mid-September numbers. You know, we really want to make sure that we've got a heavy, heavy, heavy bees. So when you push them down, this is when it's going. It's going to start looking like this, and there's going to be, you know, oh my God, what did I do? They can't all fit in the box. There's no way this is, this was stupid. I shouldn't have done this. There's no way. And this is two boxes. Wait till you get down to one box. But you got to remember, these, all those, those older bees are going to be dying off in the droves. They're, they're dying off fast. First time you get, you know, October, they're dying off. And they're going to fit in just fine. It, it's push them all down. But it is a little bit unnerving when you start seeing them all on the outside. But, but it's, it's nothing to, nothing to be concerned about. Would you describe that? That is, a, that is a double, uh, two deeps with a crap load of bees on the front of it. That's my scientific. Yeah. That looks like weed. Yeah, weed? <laughs> yeah, you know, you got to make your money when you make your money. <laughs> Are you a cannabis grower too? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to answer there. Um, so when you're talking about those numbers of those bees and you're trying to keep that, keep that, those numbers up and you're trying to make those bees as healthy as possible, what are you doing? So one thing that we, we have, uh, we've done is we have started to pump in a bunch of pollen subs. Nothing that we've really done a whole lot of in the past, but we do see a big difference in, in adding it when they need it, especially in those dark periods at the end of the season. And now for us, pushing everybody into 10 frames, really want to make sure that they've got that protein source. Just having sugar, just having honey is not enough. We really feel like you know, having that, that pollen in that hive late in the season is very important. Uh, particularly if you get those warm spells where that queen is still pumping out a bunch of brood. Uh, and, she, and she's still, you get, you've got a, a really warm October and she's still pumping out brood. You still want to make sure you've got that pollen out there so you do it. I mean, this is what the back of that truck looks like all all fall, I mean, and it doesn't really do it justice, but I mean, there is just a gazillion bees all over that. We can't, you can't keep pollen. You could dump a, you know, a 50 pound bag of pollen on the back of that truck and it would be gone in a, in a few hours. It's, what it's what product do you use? I don't really push. I mean, uh, Ultra B is what, is, what, is what we use. I've tried making it. I was, I, I'm cheap. I'll try anything to try to make stuff. I tried making my own. It don't do it. It's it's a horrible, horrible process to try to do. I, you know, one of the early ones out there was trying to use uh, egg egg based protein for pollen source. And I'm like, wow, well, it was expensive as all hell. So I'm not paying that. I went to a local chicken farm, commercial chicken farm. I bought all the eggs. I bought like four million eggs. Brought them back to my house. I scrambled four million eggs. I put them up. Start grinding, grinding them all up, put them in a dehydrator. Oh my, my house smelled like elephant farts for like a week. <laughs> I, I, what the hell am I doing? I, my wife hated me even more than normal. You know, they're doing this to these stupid bees, and you end up with this little bit of powder out of it. It's just, these guys have been, they, they've been, scientific research is out there for, for you know, I have said it, but Ultra B and some of the other ones that are out there said, They've done it. They've got it. They've done it right. Just go buy it. Don't try making it. And you see some of these ones that are out there with, you know, brewer's yeast and the other things out there. Go take that mix. Go mix that up and go side by side with Ultra B and put it out there. They don't even touch that stuff. They don't, they don't even want it. Like it's, the number of bees that you'll get hitting it is remarkably different on what they do. So. But, but Ultra B does have uh, regular pollen. 